In Unity 2019.1, we introduced Timeline Signals. Timeline Signals allow us to establish a communication channel between a timeline and outside systems in our project. A Timeline Signal is constructed from three pieces, a Signal Asset, a Signal Emitter, and a Signal Receiver. The Signal Asset is an asset stored in our project that defines our Signal Event. We store the Signal as an asset as it allows us to easily create, order, and rename signals without losing a reference to them. It also allows multiple users to work with signals simultaneously. One team member can be constructing the signal on the timeline, while another can be hooking up the reactions to these signals elsewhere in the project simply by referencing the same signal asset. Similarly, it means that multiple timelines can use the same signal asset at once. The signal emitter is a marker on our timeline that dispatches a signal asset. There are two ways to emit a signal. The first is to emit the signal from the timeline itself. To do this, we click the pin button in the timeline window to show markers, and then right click at the point in the timeline where we'd like to add our new signal emitter. We can then choose to create an emitter from a new signal asset or create an emitter from an existing signal asset in our project. Alternatively, we can drag and drop an existing signal asset onto the marker area to create a signal emitter. We can also create signal emitters by using a signal emitter track. The signal emitter track binds the signals to a game object in our timeline. For example, here I'm using signal emitters on this door game object to emit my door trigger signal. The final piece of the timeline signal system is the signal receiver. As the name implies, the signal receiver component listens out for signals and then reacts when it receives them. If the signal emitter is on the timeline itself, the game object that has the playable director component used to play the timeline will receive the signals. If the signal emitter is on a track, the game object bound to the track will receive the signals. If I select the door, you can see that the signal receiver component is linked to our door trigger signal and is ready to react. Let's see this in action. Timeline signals are a great way to control gameplay systems from sequenced events. In this cutscene, our character runs over to the panel and using timeline signals, sends a reaction to the hologram, causing it to randomly change color. Our character then runs over to the door and attempts to go through it. However, due to the current game state, the door remains closed. So let's create a reaction on the door that toggles a parameter on the animator. We can select the marker and inspect the signal receiver component for the door from inside of our timeline. Let's add a new reaction on the door trigger signal. Let's choose Animator, Set Trigger. And let's use the Toggle Door parameter. Now, whenever the door trigger signal is emitted by our timeline, the animator on the door will change this toggle. As you can see, when our character approaches the door, the door opens, our character runs through the door, and the door then closes again. It's worth noting that signal receivers can handle multiple timeline signals. Let's take a look at the signal receiver on our timeline. I'd like the hologram to reset back to its default color of blue before the character runs over to the door. Let's add a new reaction in the inspector and choose our reset color signal. Now let's add a new action and assign it to our hologram. Then let's tell the color to reset whenever the signal is received. Now, back in our timeline, we can add a new marker. We'll choose Add Signal Emitter, Add Signal Emitter from Signal Asset, and let's choose our reset color signal. When we play the scene, our signal is now emitted and our hologram resets before our character runs away from the panel. As you can see, timeline signals are flexible and easy to use. So, if you'd like to explore timeline signals and what you can do with them, you can download the free example project using the link in the description below and give it a try for yourself. Thanks for watching.